chances of that, my friend? I can beat you. You didn't beat me? I did now. <laughs> She's like, how many owners do I have? Where's all my stuff? Feels weird being back here. Nothing here. Yeah, it's all empty. Hey, Pepper, you miss us, girl? It just turned snowing, too, like up the- Wet snow, yeah. yeah. 37 degrees and snowing. Look at her. Welcome back to the second part of our move. We came back home to grab our chickens and our precious cat. Eric and I have had a long day. We thought it was better to split up and tackle some errands that way. So he went to the hardware store. He dropped off the trailer. I went and got chicken things and I also picked up our mail and we somehow met up back here at the same time. I don't know how that happened. That's pretty miraculous. You can tell behind me things are looking pretty bare. We do still have some stuff to pack, but I mean, we really have packed a lot already and brought it up to the new place. We are kind of in a little bit of a time crunch because our canned food up there, we're concerned about how warm the cabin's gonna stay. So we need to get back there pretty quickly. I know we're gonna crash for a few hours because we're tired and then we're probably gonna grab the chickens in the middle of the night or the morning. It does look barren here. It's not in here. It's weird. But you know who doesn't think it's weird? This one. <laughs> She flapped up like a turkey. She attacks. <laughs> hey. Oh my gosh, she's mean. I think she's birdie. That's a crazy chicken. Do you yeah. want to? Do you think you want to take that thing? This whole thing? Or do you want to just like put? Running a little behind this morning. We've been up since before 4 a.m. Just getting everything last minute stuff packed. Uh, we are not bringing the bees this trip. It's still kind of too early to, to risk it and to break them up. They are pretty loud in there. So I think they're doing pretty good. I fed them some food or some pollen and hopefully we can uh, grab them in the next few weeks. You can tell there's still a lot of snow around here. Obviously there's a lot of snow where we're going to. Eric and I do plan to take a few more structures such as our hoop house. We most likely are going to take our other Connex and our solar system up there as well, but we have to wait until further in the season when the ground's not frozen and we can actually come back and take the posts and everything like that up. And just in general, there's there's more to do here. So we're definitely, we're definitely not done, uh, but we have got to try and grab the chickens. Now that the light's coming out, I know that they're starting to wake up. So you're not thinking take any of that other garden stuff? What garden stuff in the greenhouse? Yeah, because we're not gonna need it, right? They're making, for how much sound they're making, they're obviously breaking cluster in the day. It's too early to feed them, that's saying it's gonna be a five degrees or something. Did you see that five degrees here? I guess that's a square too. Caught Lilanda first and then she got away. They're so scared they're not even going to come out. Just see how they do with the rest of I didn't take the bottom of these boxes, so you gotta hold them so they don't fall through. Let's try this. Let's go with the lady. Oh my gosh! You are not, you are not. You're just going to a better place. You gonna do him? You got him, man? We have captured all of our chickens. It would have been better to do this when it was dark and they're calm, but we got behind. So let's get this last one in there. 20 something chickens, right? You may need this. Man, they are just 
beating me today. Calm be down, they beat girl. me today. She's not, she's, she's not happy. Oh, it's okay, my boy. All right, here we go again. I know we keep saying it's spring, but it really looks like winter. Uh, the drive is going good. We're almost there. By almost there, I still mean pretty far away. Uh, it is always stressful traveling with animals. This is our sixth time moving, believe it or not, in like 15 years. And that's not even including the times that we stayed places and trailers. So I think we know what we're doing, but I'm not really sure at this point. <laughs> How you doing, love? What is this? Oh, it's okay. We should probably put the dogs in here so she gets familiar with them. She's scared. Well, I accidentally just peeked at that. All animals got here safely. We need to hurry up because I want to get the chickens out. They've been in the truck for like eight hours now. And we had bets placed on how cold it got in here. It's been not even uh, maybe 36 hours since we last left. And I think that the house actually holds the heat a lot more than we were thinking. I was originally thinking like 55 degrees, but I went with 52 and Eric said 49 and it is 59 degrees in here. So it stayed really, it's pretty nice. So we'll get a fire going. Um, but that was, that was pretty cool to know. It probably wouldn't get that cold until after a few days. And I know it definitely depends on the temperature outside. It was like 37 degrees when we came in. We got three eggs in this one little container here. That's oh my gosh. One. Nice ones too. There probably is a lot more. We grabbed these chickens in the morning and they had laid no eggs and we've been getting like 12 eggs a day, 14 eggs a day. So probably gonna have some eggs in here, but we got four of them in. They're looking good. Let's grab the rest. Okay, three hens. <laughs> One more egg. Another egg, Rusty. Final on the eggs. So that's why he was crowing. He just crows a lot. Things are going good. They're getting all settled in. They're still pretty scared. Ariel made them some like leftover salad mix that we we're eating. And our cabin came with an enormous amount of canned beans that were expired by like 10 years. So we saved them and we're giving them to the chickens. And she's also got a little garlic in there. We're gonna try to pump up their immune system, a little vinegar in the water. Well, we're pretty much done with the chickens for the night. I am gonna try to make a small roost for them. Give them, give them somewhere to sleep tonight. And then I put one of our little chicken lamps up top in here, this room has no windows except for a little one on the door, so it's pretty dark in here. So when I turn on the generator to run the house, I'm gonna give the chickens a little extra light tonight, but I think this was a success. All the chickens made it here and they look like they're all doing pretty good. They're eating the greens or something. I don't know what they're eating. She's gonna pop it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh gosh, you're gonna scare her, babe. Don't scream bad experiences here. Let's get her off first. Let's get her. The chickens uh, appreciate it. All right, it's been two full days that Eric and I have been unpacking and settling in. We have a lot planned for today. We are hoping to have our water unwinterized and running by the end of the night. We're gonna see if that happens. First, we have to get a lot of our food and just extra stuff that we have put away down in our crawl space. We've been unpacking our food and the cabinets here are amazing. They are just crammed with all of our food and I love it, they're organized but we still have a lot of canned food behind me and a lot of our dry storage foods. We have like 18 bins of just food. Crawl space is a little bit messy, so we need to get that cleaned up and Eric has volunteered to do that job. Okay, we're going under. We've been down there, or I've been down there quite a few times. It's actually not that bad. It's not that dirty. It's pretty good condition down there. There is a lot of leftover building materials down there. There's insulation. I think it's the insulation that they had in the roof. Looks like they just threw the rest down there and an animal had its way with it. So that's probably gonna be the main thing I'm pulling out of there. And then there's just like, uh, I don't know, some stuff. So let's go see what's down there. There's a lot of junk down here. Okay. All right, we put a thermometer down here to make sure that our canned food and stuff's not gonna freeze and it is not going to. So it's 43.3 degrees down there, 70% humidity, which is quite high. It's been cold outside. So this morning it was negative two, yesterday it was negative five Fahrenheit. So 43 degrees is pretty impressive. Peter, so this is gonna stay on the other side. Okay. This right here, you already got one bag of insulation, so. Well, it's probably just because they're making a home down there. I'm trying not to rip it, there we go. Whoa, it's tiny. Yeah, it's not a lot of room to move. It's actually really fun. I'm not joking, this is about comparable to what you would expect with the root cellar. Yeah, I know. A little colder probably, but... A little colder, you'd have to go deeper. 20 totes or something to put down there. Okay. You want to catch it before? Well, I think we're all ready down there. It actually only took about four garbage bags full of insulation. And then I vacuumed it and I laid down this really thick black plastic. And we're going to go ahead and put all of our canned food and our, I guess, dry storage food that's in those totes along the wall down there and get it out of our living room and we'll get some space in here finally. That can go pretty far down there. Come right here and then I'll start bringing it in. They're not all the way full, so it's going in here. Just be eligible to stay right at the front. 
What about this idea? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 50 pounds of rice, 20 pounds of flour. You got some dried fruits in there. Okay, let's see how we did. Now that we got that all put away down there, I can kind of show you a little bit more of our canned food that I'm planning on pulling from more like on a daily basis. Get Eric's socks out of the way. So these are quite a few jars that I know what they are. It's pretty much everything we have down there, but just like a littler version of it. We're hoping we don't have to go down there that often, but we'll see how that pans out. This was a really good opportunity for me to kind of sort through some of our canned food. I did find maybe like six jars or so that had faulty seals. That's not that big of a deal when you have over 500 jars. And a good example of that, sometimes you can just see based upon the angle, you can see if there's like a little bubble, it's not pushed down. Um, but you can see the color on this coleslaw and you can see the color on this coleslaw. So that obviously is a really good indication that the seal was bad and air has been able to get in there. We're planning on eating a lot of that and salmon this summer, just kind of as we're working. I have six different kinds of salmon here. I have silver salmon from two years ago. We have two different, two different kinds that we did. And then I have red sockeye salmon from Chitna. And I have another one here, and I don't know if you can tell which one is different. One of these is actually a year older than the other one, so I'll let you guess. But they look, they look the same to me. And then I also have some silver salmon from this past year and some Kasilov sockeye salmon that we dip netted. I think that was this, this summer. So lots of salmon to eat this summer. We've been doing a lot of cleaning up the last few days. We have some things from the chicken coop, some things in here. We've got to go make a quick run to the landfill and then we are going to come back and hopefully get that water running. I need the hose we're gonna hook it up to this valve right here and then that way when we turn on the well pump just the pressure tank's gonna be getting water nothing else and we're gonna run the run the well for a little while well this is kind of the moment of truth we are gonna turn on the well pump so we've got the generator running outside we have a hose hooked up to the pressure tank and what the plan is is we're gonna fire up the well pump and we're gonna let the pressure tank fill up and just kind of run the well for a little while since it hasn't been ran for a little while. And then hopefully we'll just start opening up valves to like the sinks, the shower, the toilet, and we'll see how it goes. So let's see if that generator can handle this load. Let's go check the water. Here it comes. That's extremely clear water. Beautiful water. Whoa. There's like no iron in it. We should try that. It's way nicer than our water at home. So we've had the hose running for just about 15 or 20 minutes. It was a tiny bit, had a tiny color to it at the beginning, but it is extremely clear. And we tasted it and it tastes like absolutely nothing. That's really nice drinking water, which we've been told this area has really nice water. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in there, we're gonna turn off the valve for this hose, we're gonna fill up the pressure tank, and then I think what I'm gonna start doing is letting cold water go to each one of the faucets in the house and we'll see what happens. So this is where the cold water comes in okay. from the pressure tank. This is all our cold water stuff. This is a cold water line that runs into the hot water heater and fills it up. Then the hot water runs out of the hot water heater, and this is all your hot water stuff. Pressure tank's building pressure. It's at 30. When it gets to 40, the generator should kick down. Okay, so this kick, this will kick on when the tank gets to 40 PSI. It'll shut off when it gets to 60 PSI. So it's not the end there. Okay, so let's turn that, turn the thing back on, and once it gets to 60, it should shut off. Okay, after further investigation, our little uh, pressure tank right here will shut off at 60 PSI, and then when it drops down to 40 PSI, it looks like it'll kick back on. We just got to 60, and the generator kicked down, so it shut off. And the whole system here in this house is very similar to a house that would just have like its own well. So we've got a pressure tank, 
that pressurizes the whole system. We've got a big water heater up top and then we have a septic tank. So now we are gonna start running cold water throughout the whole little cabin. Isn't hot your left and right's the cold? It's been so long. What do you mean we have a sink uh, at home? Hot. This is cold, honey. Cold That's is cold. right. All right, what would that be? We'll turn that one on. Okay. What is the gray water, the toilet, it's all the same. Shower, sink, it all goes into the septic tank. Okay. I hear the pressure. You gotta turn. Well, there's none, there's no water in that. No, but I heard when you turned the thing on. Okay, well, we're having problems with the shower. <laughs> Either we don't know how to turn the shower on or the little valve in there is messed up. So I keep going back and forth and no water is coming through. Let's skip over that. We're moving on to the toilet. Yes, we now have a toilet. Toilet, right? She's making sounds. She's filling up. Wow. We now can have clogs. This is like a low pressure toilet or low gallons per flush. Oh my God. Holy cow. Our first flush. Our first flush. Get rid of the glycol that's in there. All right, so first let's turn on the propane for the propane water heater. The tank's on outside? The tank's on outside. It's the same tank with the oven. Oh, look at this. We got lighting instructions. World test again. Oh, you hear that? It. it just lit. So the status, the status isn't giving us nothing yet. Yeah, medium. You hear it? We have a water heater. The water heater is officially running. I don't know. Maybe the hot water and cold water need to be on? Well, those little levers, see those little switches in there? You gotta adjust those. Well, this does this, the center one. Woohoo! We have water! Eric did it! This is very exciting. I have been chomping at the bit to get the dishes done. We are really low on drinking water. We only brought a certain amount and we're like absolutely almost out of it. Probably gonna wait till tonight to take showers. We do have running water at our other cabin that we left, but we had that storage tank inside, so we always kind of had it in the back of our minds to be conservative with the water. And this is just amazing because it's hooked up straight to the well, so it's just unlimited amount of water. Whoa, look at the pressure on the hot water. We are waiting for the hot water heater to heat up the water. So we're gonna eat lunch and we found some MREs under the house and that's a MRE is meal ready to eat. And this one is for the Department of Defense, menu nine beef stew. We're gonna give this thing a go and see if it's any good. That's apple turnover. You got some stuff, you got a spoon and we got a wheat bread snack, apple jelly, peanut butter, chocolate, chocolate hazelnut powder for a beverage. I haven't made I've made one of these in a long time, but they come with like a, its own little heating element so you can heat these kind of like out in the field. And this, that's the beef stew right there. Put it on a rock or something. It literally says that. So it's laid on a rock or something. That's funny. Whoa. And you let it sit. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's the wheat bread snack. It's really like a wheat tasting, you know what I mean? I'd say the peanut butter gets a five. A five? A five out of five? No, out of five, a yeah. 10 out of 10. I think I've had like a bad Fig Newton one time that tasted like this. There's apple on the inside. Maybe we could, that's good. Well, it turns out that hand warmer or the warming pack for this didn't work. It didn't get hot at all. So I boiled this in some water. It is nice and hot. So far, everything has just been okay tasting. It's kind of rough. It's not the most flavorful. The apple turnover was pretty good. We're gonna give this beef stew a try. Oh my God. Ooh. It's, it, it doesn't look that good, but it smells you pretty good. You cooked it, man. It doesn't look that good. Oh no, that's good. <laughs> Tastes like corned beef hash. Oh, mm. that's good. oh well, try that. 
Can you grab him? He got in a fight? He must have gotten something happened. Come on back, honey. You're fine. Oh, what he was doing over there? He got... And he's got blood on him, so... Yeah, but everyone's fine. Well, I had to rescue a rooster, but in the meantime, it sounds like our hot water heater has turned off. So let's see how warm our water is. I think I have it set on like medium heat right now. That's pretty hot. Oh my gosh, that's totally hot enough. I don't need 100 in that. Medium sugar. That's awesome. Heck yeah, we got it up and going. Nice. That's the center one. And then you can also switch it to this outside wow. thing. And then you can also do both. That only got like lukewarm. So we gotta figure out how to get that hotter. Okay, time to do some dishes. This is compost. I'm so excited to have a wash bin again. There's a six test, which it tests six different things. Every single thing was perfectly in the okay level, except for hardiness or hardness was a tiny bit high. Looks like our house back in Willow was at a hundred. No, it says zero. It says it's in the okay zone. Look at that. It's actually a perfect match. Crazy. The iron's out low. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. That's a pretty good water check. Well, that was incredible to do the dishes. Eric and I usually do dishes like multiple times in a day. So it's been really hard for us not to do them for like close to a week. Part of getting things set up here is starting to like form a new compost pile. So back home, we did a lot of composting and I always composted stuff like this that was, I know it's pretty disgusting, but the stuff at the end of doing the dishes and we've got to make sure we don't clog those pipes. I have this little container here so far that I'm working on and then a, a few five gallon buckets outside that we're gonna be composting. I always try to feed our animals first if I can. So like the chickens or the dogs with food that I have that I'm not gonna eat. But stuff like this, obviously we're gonna put it in the compost. We do also burn some things. And lastly, we take it to the garbage if we, uh, if we can't do anything else with it. This house has been uh, absolutely amazing. Nothing really has been a problem at all. We did notice when we did the inspection on it that there was a little bit of damage down here under the sink. And when I got in here to clean it up, what happened was someone had left bleach in here and I believe it froze and it kind of like popped or expanded. And when Eric and I heated up the house, it spilt, had some sort of like chemical reaction down there. So there's a little bit of damage down there, sadly, but nothing we weren't able to kind of clean up. Right now I'm keeping the doors open to make sure we've got some good airflow in there. And then what we may do, Eric and I have talked is he may like replace the bottom part of this uh, cabinet right here. But all in all, it is good to have the water going. Thing is fast. What's wrong with it? It's mad. Do not go out there. I won't. Well, we seem to have a really mad or scared moose out there, so we're gonna stay inside for a little while. But I was having problems with the shower, and I was like, why is this not getting hot? So I took it apart, and apparently there's a little gauge in there or like a safety mechanism that was only allowing the hot water lever to go like not even to medium. So it was like pretty much cold, and you can adjust it. I just took it out. So now we have full range of the hot water and I'm gonna take a shower. And it's gonna be a long one because it's been a while. Good pressure. Good morning, Eric and I are making a squash pie today to celebrate. Now that our kitchen is in order and everything, I have a few spaghetti squashes that we're able to store all winter. I have a sorry looking pumpkin. He wasn't able to keep up that well. What I actually did earlier this winter as the pumpkins were starting to go a little bit bad or I'd try to catch them before they went bad is I'd cook them and I'd immersion blend them and then I would freeze them so I had the flesh for a later date just like today. This pie is just an invention of our own. Um, it's spaghetti squash 
mixed with coconut and a few other various squashes, so pumpkin, acorn, uh, similar to pumpkin pie, and then basically add in some coconut. I'm gonna get these cut up. We're gonna cook them in the Dutch oven on the wood stove, and then we're gonna get started on our pie dough. She's sprouting. It smells like melon. Okay, and the pie dough is very simple. I have about two and a half cups of just all-purpose flour. And I'm gonna use lard and butter. I usually just use lard. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of like roughly chopped unsalted butter. And then a few scoopfuls of this very chilled lard. I don't think I've ever seen lard this hard. So the lard is sufficiently chilled. It's single digits outside today. And we have some ice water that is also just like completely ice. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. You want the fats to be really cold for pie. You don't want them to melt when you're actually making the dough. So I measure in spoonfuls, but that's probably approximately six tablespoons or so of fat or lard in addition to the butter. And that's how you get all those awesome uh, flakes in a pie crust. So that's what we're looking for. We're gonna add in our ice water. I don't know how much we're using. We will just kind of gauge. That is like glacier water. And I wanna be careful not to overwork it right now. I'm just trying to get it into like a little ball or a dish shape. And then we are going to put this outside for two hours to chill. Well, I may have to put it in a cooler outside because it's just gonna freeze if I put it outside. Well, our squash didn't take that long to cook and the pie dough did not take that long to chill. So we're gonna roll it out. We have two pie crusts that we're gonna be making. What's better than one pie? Two. <laughs> we're kind of adjusting to this new table height that's awesome to have a table, but we're kind of used to working a little bit higher. So I envision something different here in the future. We're gonna get these in the oven at 375 so they can cook for about 10 minutes while we are preparing our filling. Wow. First thing going into our filling is all of that squash that we cooked up earlier and I immersion blended it. You don't have to do that, but it's gonna have a texture to it if you use spaghetti squash and you don't immerse and blend it. And I realized that this is actually acorn squash that we froze. So again, feel free to use any squash that you have. If you're using canned pumpkin, that's obviously not gonna have as much moisture as these squashes. So you'd wanna just be aware of that and maybe not use as much of the liquids that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna add in six eggs. And I'm also adding in a cup and a half of brown sugar. We're gonna get that all mixed in. I'm gonna add one full can of coconut milk. Apparently the top two. And then I've got a little over half a cup of half and half. You can also use heavy cream. And then it's time to add all of our spices in. So I've got a little vanilla. We're using nutmeg, cinnamon, allspice, and some ground cloves. I actually forgot that I wanted to add a little bit of coconut oil to this as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of maybe like two scoops. And I think the last ingredient we need is our cornstarch. I'm probably going to put like three tablespoons because I don't want it to be <laughs> too watery. We want to make sure that it definitely thickens up. While we were doing our filling, Eric realized that our dough was not looking very good in the oven. Apparently you're supposed to weight your pie crust. I've never had an issue with that. I had an issue with it today, so they're not that pretty, but we're gonna try and take care of them. Okay, well, it's definitely not my day today. These are not turning out exactly how I hoped. I was wanting to put a little bit of cream and some sugar on the crust, and then I'm gonna toast, I'm going to top these with some toasted coconut. I'm gonna wait a little bit 
because of the circumstances, we're gonna get these in the oven at 350. They usually take a while to cook and I'm gonna keep my eye on them. <laughs> All right, these turned out halfway decent. Um, if you just make sure not to do what I did. I think I figured it out. We usually cook pie in a really deep, like casserole type dish. And I thought it'd be all fancy and get these cool pie dishes. Um, so I think it turns out, it turned out pretty good. And now we have to let it cool and we have something else planned to do in the meantime. Hey, my way is why. This one just needs the single screw. I, might have, I, might have I think it looks pretty wicked though. Did you step back and look it? One of the last finishing touches of the cabin here. So these are black tailed deer that we hunted when we lived in Oregon. So they were in Oregon. They were at our last cabin and now they're out here. We got one more to put up. You got in my arm? Yeah. I can like watch his nose. Oh, it is. You nailed the consistency. It's like a custard, like it looks. You don't think so? That crust is the bomb. See, I really like firm pumpkin pie. Down on the. I totally remember that. That was years ago. Remember we had each one, mm -hmm. we had two of them mm -hmm. hanging on the tractor. Yeah, we processed. We processed both of them back to back.